Now 10-2 and 2-0 and and oh in the NBA Cup group stage, the Golden State Warriors took down the John Morantless Memphis Grizzlies. A thoroughly symmetrical scoring effort featured an outrageous 11 Warriors scoring at least 6 points and the NBA's highest scoring bench by far meshing for 67 of the Dubs' 123 points. However, Steve Kerr was rightfully heated at the refs with Moody having to hold him back after the Warriors' 21-point lead with 4 minutes left was cut to 5 due to some biased officiating that put Memphis at the line time after time. The Dubs dealt with some BS. Lindy Waters started in place of the injured with an ACL sprain to Anthony Melton, and Waters knocked down the Warriors' first two jumpers, one from the corner which was a triple, and the other from the top of the arc that was rolled a two. On what was a 9-0 run, Wiggins scored seven of the points on it by receiving a handoff from Trace out of a Chicago action and letting it fly, gathering a nifty dime on the fast break from Curry that split two defenders, then getting a UCLA screen set by Curry in order to find his way to the rim where he retrieved the dime from Green. Wiggins was one of three players in the starting five next to Curry and Green to post exactly 13 points. One of the NBA's best defenders in the young glove Gary Payton II would clamp up Marcus Smart in this isolation by reaching in at just the right moment for the steal. The offensive possession before that, Buddy Heald would begin his microwaving off the bench by whipping a left-handed dime to GP2. He'd then drain a triple over the late contest of Smart, work out of a Chicago action by getting inside for the floater, and get a weak side handoff from Anderson before setting him up in the pocket. Buddy finished with a team-high 18 points. Pajemski saved this ball from going out of bounds behind his back directly on target to Jonathan Kaminga for one of the assists of the year. Just an insane display of precise hustle and craftiness from Pods. This baseline out of bounds features Heald faking the cross screen for Waters and instead Lindy using the cross screen on the other side from Looney to receive the catch and shoot. With Draymond quarterbacking, it's then Waters setting this off-ball screen on both Jake LaRavia and Vince Williams Jr., which leads to a Curry 3 while he's falling over. After an impactful start, Waters chased down this Santee Aldama layup for the denial off the glass and came down on his knee awkwardly. He hyper-extended that knee and wouldn't return. To close out the half, Curry isoed LaRavia, was ultimately triple teamed, yet still drained this incredible fader from the baseline. With Pods replacing both Melton and Waters in the starting five to open the second half, Curry proceeded to hit a jumper off a Jackson Davis screen. Then get a pick from Wiggins, collapse the D, and no look to find Green. Draymond got loose for another triple, this time off a Bajemski drive and kick. Curry getting top locked leads to him pointing to Draymond in order to get loose on a backdoor cut, and Steph receiving the entry from Green, drawing two, then finding Trace. After Buddy comes off this Kavon pick, he shows off his isolation pizzazz, momentum crossing past LaRavia before hanging in the air past Edie for the left-handed finish. Stefan locking up for one of his four steals on the night leads to him getting a pull-up triple in transition to put the dubs up 13. The Warriors essentially cruise from that point on, as that last deep ranger from Stefan, and one to close the third from Buddy, gave them a ton of momentum. But the refs given the Grizzlies 33 free throws for the game, which included eight in the final two minutes alone, would contribute to this being just a five-point Warriors win when it was all said and done. Both Steve Kerr and Buddy Heald gave their take on the officiating. Uh, it was just um, kind of disgusting. Last quarter and a half, it was disgusting. I felt bad for our fans having to watch just the, what transpired, just the, you know, but great win. And uh, we're, we'll take the win and uh, we'll move forward. Frustrated on the way you got played in the fourth quarter? Or, I mean, you, you obviously played so well. I was frustrated with the flow of the game and um, it, it just, uh, it, it, you know, it was just disappointing um, to, uh, to see the, the game unfold the way it did. Um, I give Memphis credit, they kept playing, obviously point differential matters. and. You know, so they played all the way through and, and uh, made up some ground late. And um, uh, so they, they, did, they did their job. And um, like I said, I'm, I'm thrilled with the win. Uh, love the way our guys competed. And uh, it was just too bad that the, the game had to just evolve into a, a parade of the free throw line. I think they kind of messed up a lot, but it's the game. You can't come go back and turn, turn around. How do you feel? I mean, overall, you guys played. I mean, obviously, it's another. I think we I think we played great until they start until they start doing that. 
Uh, I think they tried to jump up the game, and uh, I know hats off to Memphis, they're aggressive. But uh, I just think that when they call Tiki Tac fouls on one side, they got to call it back on the way. You can't just reward them because we're up by 15, up by 17. You know, I think he's, if we get Rita deserve a call, we should get it. That's all I'm saying. Draymond Green tied up Zach Eady's leg in what was maybe Eady's welcome to the league slash welcome to the Bay Area moment. Green's obviously got to do his best to avoid those types of plays while staying himself. Draymond, however, led the Warriors in all of assists, rebounds, and technical fouls in this one. But more notably, Green posted his fourth straight game with multiple three-pointers made, the longest streak of his career according to Stat Mamba. Dre's making a career-best 45.2% of his three-pointers on the season. We went over the Warriors side of things, but Green gave his take on the threat the Grizzlies posed. An unconventional offense these days, and so to see that for the first time took a little getting used to, uh, but I thought our coaching staff did a great job of preparing us for it. They came right out the gate. I was just telling CD, they came right out the gate. It was like, yo, what they're doing is weird. And so immediately for us as players, you lock in, like you're expecting the unexpected. Like, in the NBA, most rotations and thing patterns are pretty similar. What they're doing is like, I haven't seen it. And, um, so I thought we did a great job of adjusting to that. Uh, and playing, still sticking to our defensive principles and the identity that we've created for ourselves. But uh, we made some quick adjustments. I thought Stack was great on the adjustments. Uh, we made some quick adjustments during that game to make sure the game went in our favor. And I thought we did a great job uh, executing against their top locks. They're trying to force everything down to the bigs. I thought we did a great job of taking care of those. And uh, like I said, also defending their unconventional offense. For one reason or another, we're witnessing a more motivated than ever Wardell Stephen Curry II. As we progress further into the season and playoffs, potentially even after a fifth championship for this Warriors dynasty, we're going to get into the reasons for that motivation. But whatever it is, it's driving Steph to play some of the best ball of his career on both ends. From 10 to 16 feet, Curry's shooting a career high by far 88.9%, which is ridiculous. Averaging 25 points in the month of November, Steph Curry is on pace to be the oldest player in NBA history to average 20 plus points on a 50-40-90 shooting split within a single month. Also, the greatest shooter and one of the greatest players ever now has 4,400 three-pointers made in his career between the regular season and playoffs, while the next closest in James Harden doesn't even have 3,400. That's absolutely insane. Collectively, the Warriors are on pace to do something special in 2025. The 24-25 campaign's now a part of some of the best 12-game starts in the Steve Kerr era. In 2015-16, 21-22, 14-15, 16-17, 18-19, and this season, the Warriors started at least 10-2. In every one of those seasons leading up to this one, they made at least the finals. In three of those years, they won it all. How much does that stat mean in your opinion? Let me know down below. This was your boy D Flow, and I'll see you next video.